Hey, welcome back. So we left off last time and we just created our edge loops around this high res mesh. We created um, a loop around the eye, around the bridge of the nose, the cheek and the chin, one around the mouth and the other one we did around the face. So as I said in part one that um, I'll uh, continue working on this and, and create um, you know, a finished version, um, which I've got here. So let's take a look at this finished version. So I've put the high res mesh in the background and I've got my face mask here, what it seems to be a face mask um, in front. Now you can see the same loops here. Let's just expand this view here. You can see the loops that I created. So let's just select this one here, going round. That was the I one. We get one for the um, the nose or the cheap band. We'll just say select loop. We can see that there. And we've got this one, which goes around the face. So those were our loops. Now, the next stage of this brings us to the um, next tool, which is heat shrink. We're going to use heat shrink now to place this um, um, low res version of this mesh um, and then wrap it around this background image, uh, background image, <laughs> this uh, background mesh. So let's make a start on this, right. When you're using the heat shrink, you need to have your um, uh, your retopologized mesh in this case, your your object which is going to be heat shrunk, and your foreground layer, and the thing that's going to be used to wrap onto in your background layer. That's the way that it works. And there's a little bit of a problem with heat shrink at the moment, which we'll look at now. So let's go over to, let's try and find the tool. It's under the modify tab under down here. We can find heat shrink. Now, if I try and use this tool, I'll just bring my numeric panel here so we can see. The options here, we've got a mode which is set to either the X axis Y or Z and it can either be set to normals and sphere or closest point. Now for this we're going to use normals and if I just use this straight off the bat check out what happens. It kind of goes a little bit weird. You can see as I'm increasing the amount here it's kind of just not working as I would expect it to. Okay little bit of a glitch in this tool as it stands at the moment but there is a workaround for it so let's check that out let's get back to our quad view and zoom out a little bit and instead of having a background and foreground selected let's select both background and foreground go over to our transform tool here and under scale x y and z we're going to increase this amount and i'll increase it to 1000 by 1000 by 1000 drop the tool and zoom out so what we've done essentially is just increased the size of this, these two mesh here. Right, let's repeat the procedure using the heat shrink this time and see what happens. Remembering, of course, to put the high res mesh in the background layer. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Let's move this over here so we can see. And I'll 
that value at zero. Make sure I'm set to normals. And now I'll pull this mesh back. Now you can click and drag as I'm doing here, or you can just enter the value in 100%, and then it will snap to the model, the background mesh, like so. If you don't like, you know, how, how finely it's, it's snapping to the background, you can always use this offset. For example, if I put in 10 meters, you know, it's going to, whoa, it's, it's completely gone 10 meters away from our object here. So we don't want it quite that much. So if we do something like five millimeters, I increase that slowly, maybe 10. You can see that it's slowly coming forwards, maybe 15. Oops. Okay, that'll do for now. Oops. Okay, let's zoom in. And you can see it's done a pretty nice job of making of wrapping that uh, low density mesh around this face. So let's just remove our background layer. So come there. Now we'd obviously have to come in here and create the uh, the extra detail around the eye to create the actual eyelids and also around the lips. And maybe we'll do that in a, in a future um, tutorial. We obviously also, if we wanted to continue this, we'd have to continue this around the, the back of the head. We could do the same process on that. Um, but generally, you want most of your detail for these kind of message, mess, meshes in, in, the, in the actual features of the face. The back of the head can be masked by hair or a hat or something like this. So we don't generally need to put quite as much detail in the back of the head anyway. Uh, maybe we would for, for the ear. Um, so, so that would be uh, another opportunity where we could do a little bit of retopologizing there on, on, on an ear. Uh, but an ear is a little bit of a complex shape, so we'll we'd have to see how that goes. We've got obviously got more um, geometry that we need to put in here for the nostrils as well, but, but we've got a very good start here. You'll notice here that um, the um, vertexes are kind of stretching a little bit. And that was what I was mentioning in part uh, one about uh, making sure that that face loop, which goes around the face, isn't too far, too, isn't too far away from, from the, um, from the center of the, from, from the actual face itself. For example, if I'm creating them down here, then when I use heat shrink, it's going to just you know, it's not going to know where the mesh is. So it, so your low res mesh must be, you know, you must be within the facial area for, for heat shrink to, to, to work. Okay. So there you go. That's using the new tweak tool and the new heat shrink tool in Lightweave 11.5 to retopologize a high-res mesh. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope you've learned something from it. Um, if you can, check out liberty3d.com. Uh, there's lots of more tutorials there for you to look at. Um, and also check out my um, YouTube channel. Uh, there ain't that much on there at the moment, but um, I plan on making a few more um, free tutorials for uh, for you to look at in the future. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.